Hey viewers, I've done a few vi videos recently having to do with uh, adjusting derailleurs and shifting issues and stuff like that. And I've gotten a few questions on uh, what causes chains to slip, skip, uh, jump, and how to fix those. So I'm going to kind of go over the causes of that and how to fix it. Now one of the most common causes is simple derailleur adjustment. On modern uh, derailleurs with index shifting, the pulleys in the cage here should line up with the cog that uh, the chain is on. And what happens is if the uh, adjustment is slightly off to where the uh, pulleys are slightly off of, uh, not in line with the, uh, the cog there, maybe it's in, in between two cogs, that the chain, especially under torque, might try to jump to the next cog and then maybe back again. And so you simply need to adjust the derailleur. I have some videos that where, I, where I adjust the derailleurs, but basically you're going to adjust the barrel adjuster here and adjust it so that the pulleys come over and line up with the cog that the chain is on. And that will often solve the problem. Now, if you have an older bike with friction shifters, then you simply need to be uh, adjusting the shifter so that uh, the derailleur is then lined up with the cog. You'll just have to kind of do that manually by feel and practice. Now, another thing to look at that will cause the uh, chain to kind of jump around a little bit is a bent derailleur or derailleur hanger. Uh, the cage here should be in a straight line with the cogs but if you find it is kind of bent over in towards the spokes or bent out away from the spokes or kind of at an angle uh, then it could be that the derailleur itself is damaged or more likely probably the hanger is just uh, slightly bent and I have a video on how to straighten their derailleur hanger if you check the description of this video you can see that and so often just straightening that out uh, that might fix the problem too. Okay, the issues I've discussed so far uh, generally will cause what's called auto shifting or phantom shifting where the chain will try to slip over another cog and back when you don't really want it to. Now another issue is uh, slipping where the chain will actually slip over the teeth and then fall back into the next slots over. And what that's awesome often caused by is a worn chain and or a worn cassette slash freewheel. Now, a worn chain is very easy to check. Uh, you can buy a gauge like this for that, and uh, you just kind of set this in there and bring it down, and this little part over here shouldn't fall down into the little gap between the teeth. If it slides in, then that means the chain is worn. Uh, I also have a video on how to uh, measure uh, chain wear using a 12-inch ruler. So I'll include uh, in the description uh, a link to that video as well. So the checking the chain is very easy. So if the chain is worn, go ahead and replace it with a brand new chain. Either way, we want to go back and check out the, uh, the cassette, especially if the chain is worn. Okay, so now identifying a worn cassette or freewheel is a little trickier and a lot of times it just takes a little bit of experience to know what you're looking at. Um, one thing to keep in mind is people tend to ride in some cogs more often than others. So those cogs are going to wear faster than the other cogs that are not ridden in as much. And also the smaller cogs tend to wear faster than the big cogs under the same uh, riding amount because uh, the chain is in contact with fewer uh, teeth on the smaller cogs than they are on the bigger ones and so each of the teeth is just going to wear a little bit faster than the others but what you're going to look at is look at the at the cogs and look for misshapen teeth so uh, just look at the teeth and you, you might find like one two three of the cogs that the teeth uh, are worn differently than the teeth on say the largest cogs there that they're just going to be uh, the teeth are going to be like skinnier, they're going to have weird uh, ramps there. Uh, so that's one thing to look at. Um, they also make some tools. Uh, this one here is called KMC Sprocket Checker. And the problem with the tools is they don't work equally well on all different uh, cassettes and freewheels. So you have to kind of take them with a grain of salt. Um, but you kind of drape these over here like this and this is like a little, little lever so I'm going to pull this down here and put tension on this chain 
and I should be able to like lift these smaller uh, links off of there. They should come off pretty freely like that. Now if the cog was worn to where there was more a wider gap between the teeth there, then I wouldn't be able to like lift these up as well. And so that would be an indication that uh, that the, this cassette would need to be replaced. Uh, I have another tool here, this is called a Roll-Off HG Check, and this is supposedly designed for uh, Shimano Hyperglide cassettes, um, but it works basically the same way as the KMC Sprocket Checker. Again, use these uh, with a grain of salt. But if you suspect that the uh, cassette or freewheel is worn, you're seeing a uh, difference in the teeth, go ahead and replace it. I mean, you always just try a different cassette that you know is good and see if the skipping uh, goes away. And if that's the case, then you know that it's a worn cassette. Okay, so now another thing that might be an issue is uh, stiff chain links. Uh, these chain links here should pivot freely at the rivets uh, there, but sometimes you get like an old chain, it's got like a little bit of rusty or whatever, and you'll get a pair of links that are just uh, kind of stuck or barely move. And what happens is as they go through the derailleur pulleys, the derailleur will kind of have to pull forward, the cage will kind of pop forward and pop back as those links go through and so you kind of get a, a popping feeling every time those links go through. Um, so what you can do is you can get some oil onto the, that pivot point there and then just start working those links until it kind of frees up. Um, or better yet, you can go ahead and just replace the chain with a brand new chain and because uh, sometimes you'll get other uh, pairs of links that are a little stiff and that might just be an indication that the, the chain is just not in good shape. So just go ahead and replace it anyway. Now another thing to be aware of, I don't know the history of what's been done with your bike. If you have mismatched components in your drivetrain, that can also cause like auto shifting, bandage shifting, where the chain is going to try to jump between cogs. Uh, if you're say running like a 9-speed shifter with an 8-speed cassette, or you're running Shimano uh, shifters with a Capagnol or derailleur, or something like that, mismatched incompatible components like that can cause issues as well. So that's something to uh, look into and make sure that everything is compatible. Now one other thing that might cause uh, the chain actually try to like auto shift and change back and forth is frame flex. Uh, the, the frames may seem relatively stiff, but they do flex a little bit. And especially like if you're climbing a hill and you're standing up on the pedals and you're really pedaling, the frame might be twisting a little back, back and forth. And that might be just enough to cause the chain to try to jump up to other cogs and back. So again, check the uh, trailer adjustment on that. Um, so where it might be just slightly off and but it could be that the, just the frame is flexing and might be just an issue with a very lightweight frame. Uh, so if that's the case, then you might want to just try to climb hills in a seated position, with, which is often better anyway. Anyway, those are kind of the main causes for uh, slipping, skipping, jumping, auto shifting, whatever you want to call it. I hope you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give my video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the big subscribe button so you can see new videos that come out. I'm always coming out with new videos. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page, uh, and I post a lot of stuff over there that don't, doesn't appear in the videos. And I have a webpage, rjthebikeguy.com. Go over there, sign up for that page. I post a lot of stuff over there as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.